Welcome to the Cardona Valley Central Otago for the much anticipated return of the Repco Race to the Sky. It's the longest gravel hill climb in the world. We've waited nearly a decade and this weekend over 100 cars, bikes and buggies will bravely take on 135 punishing turns up 14.5 kilometres to reach 1500 metres above sea level and Mike's all in a bid to become king of the hill. Yeah, absolutely, Summer, but you know, it, it's it's bigger than that. It's the heritage of this event. 1998 was the first time that this hill was attacked by these particular cars and bikes and buggies. And in that time, we've seen some absolutely amazing names here. Monster Tojima, he has cracked this eight times. He's going for nine this time. Possum Born, in all those years that he was here and fought for this mountain, his car is going to be here again this weekend with Alistair McRae. Kenneth Erickson raced that last time. So the heritage of this event and what it's provided this region and the legends it has built and will build this weekend is phenomenal. The lineup certainly are star studded, and the big goal this weekend is to crack the eight minute mark. Founded in 1998, Race to the Sky was a new concept for motorsport in New Zealand, taking a similar approach to the famed Pikes Peak event held in Colorado, America, and applying it to a quiet 14.5km road carved into the side of a mountain in the Cardrona Valley on the South Island of New Zealand. From year one, the depth of the field entered was undeniable. Names like Monster Tajima, Rod Millen, Stig Blomquist, Ian Fitch and Possum Bourne becoming household names along with their iconic vehicles. As the event grew, the competition got tighter and the vehicles faster, but one man came to own the mountain. Monster Tajima and his purebred hill climb machines helping claim the King of the Mountain title a dominant eight times. His main competition, Kiwi Possum Born, a rivalry and true friendship cut tragically short. <laughs> There we are, the celebration's on the podium. In 2015, Monster is back to reclaim his title, as is Possum in spirit through his iconic Subaru WRC car in the hands of Alistair McRae and his son Spencer, here to present the Possum Bourne Memorial Trophy for the fastest Kiwi competitor up Repco Mountain in 2015. back to it today it's just amazing it's one of those pinch yourself moments deja vu here we were 17 years ago starting this thing and now it's got a new life of its own with Tony having picked up where I left off and I'm sure now it'll have to continue more years perhaps at least another 10. It had done its 10 years and now it's time to bring it back. I think the inspiration came from me and Grant having a red wine one night and getting having too many red wines a couple of old fellas thinking we can master this thing yet again the first year i really pushed the boat out we brought in half a dozen american competitors from pikes peak and i'd have to say that financially the first year was an absolute disaster but at the end of the first year i had no alternative so we had to make the event grow and become better to repay the debt and, and keep it moving. Over the years, it gained in stature. Monster, I mean, he set the benchmark. Rod Millen, close behind. Monster won the event eight times, and Rod Millen won it once, and Possum Bourne won. So such was the standard of the event that that's what it took to get there. Even today, now everyone wants to knock Monster off his perch. He's still number one. You come here with such expertise, and to do it again must be exciting. Yeah, I'm waiting, waiting, <laughs> waiting until today. So I'm very, very happy. I'm exciting. This is a Toyota 86. I'm sure that this is the fastest Toyota 86 in the world because I want to keep my title in the King of the Mountain. It's fantastic for me. So this year I want to keep. So I must be do my best. You watched it throughout its history and it was something you really wanted to be a part of. It must be exciting for you now. Yeah, I just remember watching this back in the days on the telly and you know seeing the trophy trucks and uh, Monster Jijima's car and thought, oh, one day I got to get down there and it kind of all died and then as soon as it came back I thought yeah I got to get down here for this. There's a wide variety of bikes here and I think I've probably spread that variety. <laughs> what we like is the uniqueness, it's very Kiwi you know, it's, it's up the mountain, everyone's in a different vehicle so in, in an era when lots of cars are often the same, this event's the complete opposite, everyone's different. It's a really iconic event, Percy remember looking at the race a few years back and saying wow it'd be great to be a part of that so to help bring it back is just awesome. Steve tell us about the event of old, the friendships, the camaraderie, the energy of the event. 
again. Yeah, we come back here in, in early 2000, uh, me and Brett Haywood. So we watched the video about 50 times and that's all we knew about the event. We built our little motorcycle powered buggies that came over. We got second, third, really good outright results. We took away those memories and we just want to come back and do it again. And Brett's here again as well. We found out last uh, August this event was going to be resurrected again, which we were uh, suitably excited about. It's daunting, it's adrenaline charge and that's why we do it. That's what brings us back. If it was easy, we'd only do it once and that'd be it. We came here in 2002 to do it once and said that's all we wanted to do. Well, we've done it five more times until it stops. There's nothing like it in the world. 2001 was an incredibly special year of the Repco Race to the Sky. It was the year that rally legend Possum Bourne won the event when his son Spencer joins us and you get to award the Possum Bourne Memorial Trophy. This must be incredibly special for you. Uh, yes, it, uh, it very much is. I couldn't think of anything better than being down here. I remember at the end when he was awarded the trophy, me and my brother Taylor got up on stage and we got a picture with Dad in the trophy with our hands in the air. Watching it over and over is never gets old. What about Monster and Alistair McRae? There's some fantastic people here and they're really paying tribute to what the event was of old. Well, Monster's just the hero. He's the face of it, really. He's globally renowned. And of course, Alistair, who was just short of where Colin was. My money's on Alistair to break the eight minute mark. <laughs> This weekend we'll see the culmination of nine classes running up this hill. We've got motorbikes, we've got quads, we've got rally cars and we've got specials. Saturday, three practice sessions. Sunday, a qualifying, the top 20 shootout and then the final event. The honour of leading the field away and being the first to run Repco Mountain in anger since 2007 went to Amberley quad rider Tim George aboard his Yamaha Banshee. Quads and motorbikes make up more than half of the race to the sky field and require unique riding styles to get the best from this course. With the bikes, it's balance that's all important. Nathan McCowie's KTM 450 demonstrates the dominant formula on this hill. 450cc, lightweight and good handling key ingredients. With the quads, power is a far larger part in the equation. Local hero and outright contender Ian Fitch's machine even featuring active aerodynamics to add downforce for additional grip when the brakes are used. The first runs are about settling in and getting used to running on this hill again. 78-year-old Race to the Sky legend Rocket Ron showing how it's done. Age doesn't mean a thing to you, Ron, does it? No, no, it doesn't mean a thing. Um... I got a good mate that keeps me going when I look at Valentino Rossi and he's got a saying, I'm old, I'm fit and I'm very fast. And being the type of fellow I am, a Kiwi engineer as you'd call it, I love building my own things to go fast. This is very technical, this hill, it's just continuous course. It's really skillful track, this one. If you go too fast, you won't make it. And if you go too slow, well, you'll be like me old and slow. I've got a lot of living to do yet, so I'll be careful. But at the same time, if I can honk it, I'm going to. In the first practice run, Darcy Prendergast was third fastest super quad. Teammate Brendan Price second fastest with a rapid 9.14, but it was Ian Fitch who stole the show. An astonishing 8.40 on his first run, good enough for second outright. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that the quad would come in second. So tell us about the spec and why they're so fierce out there. They are a two-wheel drive, so I mean, I guess that's in some ways a disadvantage. But I mean, the fact you can move your body weight around, um, transfer it from side to side, I guess all helps. That's the beautiful thing about this event is so many different machinery. It's always been a challenge for me, not obviously to race the clock and, and try and win the super quads, but obviously just see how you can place against all these other top vehicles from around the world, really. Of the 103 vehicle field, only former WRC star Alistair McRae and the Vantage Subaru could knock Fitch from first place. The first run up the hill was challenging for some, the engine and Carl Gardner's Navara failing before leaving the rally track, and 14-year-old Jack Hawkswood finding mechanical gremlins 12 kilometres into the course. Tim George no doubt wished he didn't get out of bed. First his quad failed to make it to the top, and then this rollover in his Polaris XP1000 UTV. In the lightweight motorcycle division, Nathan McCowie took charge. Glenn Manning led the heavyweights from Chris Birch in a KTM trifecta, and McCowie didn't let double duties hold him back and also led the middleweights from Matt Squire, his time quick enough for an impressive fourth outright. On board the quads, Callum McRae led a close battle between the lightweight machines. 
Daniel Callanan was in charge of the historic rally division in the crowd favourite RS 1800 Escort. And Chris Hayes' Toyota MR220 was the fastest of the national two-wheel drive cars up the hill. The closely contested national four-wheel drive class was headed by Steve Wellington and his Evo 6 RS. And Donald Preston's mighty Toyota Hilux held a slim lead over Klim Lammers in the Orens class. The rally class leaders were Andrew Graves and David Calder in their Evo 3. And the unlimited class was headed by outright leader Alistair McRae. We'll be back with more action from Repco Race to the Sky after this break. Rally star Alison McRae is a virgin here at the Repco Race to the Sky, but he's made his mark all around the world. But the first run, it's done. It's under the belt, and you got the top time. I mean, how did you feel about that? Yeah, no, obviously, really good. The first run is just to try and get a, well, get your mind around the speed you actually go up the hill uh, with the extra horsepower and try to memorise a lot of the, the, the corners. There was a few that I went into too hot and went wide, and there was a few that I definitely lifted off far too early. about the car. It's a special car and a special run this weekend. It's representing Possum Bourne. Yeah, obviously the Vantage Subaru, it's the car that he drove. The car's an original WRC car from Subaru from the, the World Rally team. Possum ran it here in 2001 and won the event with it and then again in 2002. So it's got a fair bit of history about it. As far as the specification, it's very similar to what it was, you know, when they run it in the WRC, just with a hell of a lot more horsepower. The stage is very flowing but it's flowing between hairpins or between tighter corners. The fast stuff, you've got to keep the car very, I always say, neat and tidy, keep it clean on the line. And then the tighter stuff, you can set the car up well before the corner to slide in to try and get the drive out the corner with the wheels pointing straight. There's 60% of the, you can see quite a lot, and then there's probably another 40% that you're not sure what's around the corner. You don't know whether it tightens or opens. It's difficult to get it right when you don't have pace notes or you don't know the road, but it's all just about trying to keep the car on the clean line and off the loose at the side and push as hard as you can. It's great to see this car, an icon of motorsport in New Zealand, driven in anger again. And Alistair believes there's at least one second per kilometre once he knows the course better. As the second run commenced, the drivers began to push the limits more, in some cases too far, in order to find more time on the run up the hill. Surprising everyone was Brett Hayward, his purpose-built four-wheel drive special taking the lead from McRae with a rapid 8.29. The Australian's formula, lightweight, a unique four-wheel drive system and a 400 horsepower plus supercharged Hayabusa engine. His time 12 seconds under his own class record from 2007. Sitting in third place was quad rider Ian Fitch who improved his time by three seconds and in fourth starting to flex his muscles, Nobuhiro Monster Tajima in his new Super 86 Hill Climb Special. Monster's new car built to break the eight minute mark at Repco Mountain is said to produce over 900 horsepower from its twin turbo V6 while weighing only 950 kgs. Monster is known to build up speed over the event saving up for an all out assault in the final run so his eight minute 44 second time showed ominous promise. Tony Quinn, never one to shy away from the spotlight, was driving the Monster Tamer, the 850 horsepower Nissan GTR engine machine everyone was talking about. Masterminds behind the car, Seppi, tell us about this beast, it is fantastic. Tony and I have been talking about it for a while, as soon as we heard that he was um, going to start the event up, I was kind of on his back and giving him a hard time that we should build a car. It's a unique car, I don't think, we've never ever anyway built any car that's anything like it and I don't think anyone's built a car that's similar to it. We make about a thousand kilograms of downforce at 200 kilometers an hour. We've got close to 860 horsepower and the car weighs about 985 kilo. The car that we're running that's been purpose built to do the job um, is lightweight, full of power, four wheel drive and got three good brakes. It's built to do the job, it's whether the guy and the seat can help it do that job. Tony's very, very capable on tarmac. The car that we've designed is designed to work driving more straight. Obviously, you know, the car's always gonna slide, but the intention is to drive similarly to what he's used to, and it seems to be working. After a 20 second improvement in the second run, we'll have to see what Tony is capable of in the final practice run on Saturday. First on the course of the highly diverse field of bikes and quads, the smallest class, the lightweight bikes, still led by McCowie's KTM SXF250, although Andrew Kirk 
with a 10.03 steadily closing the gap while still having some time to pose for the photographers. Heavyweight class leaders Glenn Manning and Craig Hyde were separated by a mere four tenths of a second, while Red Bull Enduro expert Chris Birch slipped down to fifth. The big KTM looking a handful on the challenging course. Where are you at? How comfortable are you feeling? I still really feel like I'm trying to work it out. Uh, I just crashed in that last run, <laughs> just really lightly, but just, you know, it's hard to go fast when you're lying on the track. Yeah, the, the track's changing constantly, so whilst I'm trying to work it out, it's changing, but, you know, that, that's the sport. Michael Kotler and board his Kawasaki began to put the pressure on in the middleweight class, reducing the deficit to only 14 seconds, but Nathan McCowie remains supreme, his 911 still firmly placing him within the top 10. Yeah, it's a little bit unexpected so far. I mean, we came into the weekend with obviously high expectations, uh, but we're certainly, uh, so far, the two runs, well, three runs we've had today have, uh, have gone fairly well, and um, yeah, we're, we're certainly ahead of, ahead of the game to where we thought we would be. Will this translate tomorrow when it really counts? Well, that's what we'll wait and see, fingers crossed. Uh, that uh, everything goes to plan and, and uh, we'll be holding it wide open to try and make it happen. Joshua Wackrow riding his Yamaha Banshee opened up a slender lead in the lightweight quads. However, the field behind was close, making this class anyone's game. The super quads were a different matter. Despite Darcy Prendergast setting a very competitive 9 minutes 16, he wasn't able to touch Fitch, the BRM 1080 super quad powering up the course. Its rider working overtime to set a time which knocked over 30 seconds off the next fastest motorbike or quad. Well, I don't know how everyone else is going to do in this run, but I had a few problems, had to back it down, so I did an 8.40, so it equaled my time from this morning, but the second run I, I did a faster run, so I'm expecting 6th or 8th in this run, but really today's for fun, it's tomorrow that counts, and come back to fight again tomorrow. The powerful off-road association New Zealand vehicles are favourites with the fans. However, one of the heroes struck trouble, Donald Preston pulling off, Passed by third place Clem Lammers, his time of 10 minutes 3 seconds picked by son Clem Tristan Lammers, smaller engine machine. However, it was the twin turbocharged V8 Thundertruck piloted by John O'Climo who stole the show, besting the field by 3 seconds. Daniel Callanan and wife Kirsty led parents Keith and Mary Ann Callanan in a classic rally battle of the escorts. Keith a familiar sight on both tarmac and gravel in New Zealand. Race to the Sky stalwart Trevor Crowe struck trouble in the open two-wheel drive class, leaving Race to the Sky founder Grant Aitken to set the pace in the game over Queenstown Toyota 86 lent to him by Tony Quinn. I just wish I'd been driving 17 years ago. This is just a blast. I'm having an absolute ball pounding away up here and I've had uh, three runs now and I've got it mastered. I'll be, I'll be bloody embarrassing everyone tomorrow, probably myself included. Michael and Lorna Tall move to the front of the open four-wheel drive class, the Evo 4 looking at home over the 14.5 kilometre course. Behind Glenn Frew's older Mitsubishi Evo was well within striking distance. Mike Turfus's Evo 8 only a further three seconds behind. Karen Hall and Glenn Whiteman push their Subaru to the lead of the rally course class narrowly in front of Andrew Graves. The arrival of Brett Haywood on the course set the tone for the final run. The little Repco race to the Sky Special moving visibly faster than earlier in the day. As the split approached, it was obvious it was a quick run. Although Brett himself will likely be surprised by the 8.23, 18 seconds up on Fitch's time. Tony Quinn's gradual improvements continued, greater confidence in the car and familiarisation with the course saw the times begin to match the potential. Although at 9 minutes 20, there is still a long way to go to get on the pace of the front runners. Next up, Alistair McCrae. Cray, the Subaru, undoubtedly the most spectacularly driven vehicle in the field. The former factory WRC driver using every inch of the road and sometimes more on his way up the hill. However, the clock doesn't lie and he's behind Haywood. A time of 8.26 not good enough to take the top spot. Not sure about this run. The second run we went, we tried a different tyre. We went quicker, but not, not an, an awful lot quicker. Uh, so, but you know, obviously still happy, the car's working well. A hell of a lot of concentration. The speed you come up the hill at, it's, it's, uh, it's seriously impressive. So, uh, great fun, enjoying it, and uh, we just need to get quicker. Final car on the course, Monster Tajima, still tentative in places, but clearly becoming more confident in both the car and the course's evolution. His time and improvement at 8.38, good enough for third place outright, a mere second a kilometre off the pace set by Haywood. The King of the Mountain confident that his setup will be good enough to vault up the outright leaderboard.
The best time of day one went to Brett Hayward into the 8.20s, three seconds faster than Alistair McRae. That must feel good. Yeah, it was an incredible run then. There were some spots there where we certainly picked up some time. There was a couple of corners I probably didn't get as neat as the first run. So, look, to be honest, when I got to the top on that run, I thought I'd be comfortable with a sort of an 8.40. To come away and find out I was three seconds quicker again was just awesome. It's holding together really, really well. It's handling well. The road's gripping up. The road's getting swept, so it's getting faster and faster. So really looking forward. Welcome to the dawn of day two for the 2015 Repco Race to the Sky. They've had three practice runs up the mountain yesterday and today is the day they have to put it all together. Qualifying this morning for the cars and the bikes, then they go into the top 20 shootout which will dictate where a lot of the riders and drivers will actually start the final run this afternoon. And then we will see who is crowned King of Repco Mountain. Monster, three practice runs yesterday, qualifying today. How's the car going? Yeah, everything going well, because uh, we, we want to know about this tire, this car, and you know, this surface. So now we have a lot of data from yesterday. So now we are best of setting for today. You've got qualifying and the big run this afternoon. Any game plan changes, or are you just going to go as fast as you can? Yeah, of course, it must be maximum attack. Maximum attack, this is my way. It's time to put it all together. What is the plan? Basically, uh, just make a you know, nice, smooth run first out. I'm fairly confident in what we've got and feeling like we can get a good time up there and, and be back in the top three. The spectators here expect a car up there, not a quad. Yeah, I guess a lot of people just think it's a regular race quad or even a farm quad. This is high spec as Tony Quinn's car or Monster's car. I mean, we've spent a lot of time developing it. I feel like as, as well as riding the bike reasonably well, I mean, the bike actually works on the road, you know, so it makes the job a whole lot easier. So the first man off today up the hill in qualifying, Nathan. Nathan, you had a magic run yesterday. Have you done much to the bike overnight to get it to go any quicker? Um, not really. We're really happy with the way things ran yesterday, and uh, certainly, you know, the bike pulled well. 250 is a little bit tamer, but certainly the big bike, the 450, you have to have some respect. There was a couple of little mistakes, so uh, we want to fix that today. So first onto the course for qualifying, Nathan McCowie, one of a number of riders doing double duties this year at Race to the Sky, setting off on the fan-friendly rally track at the base of the mountain before blasting up the hill to tackle the challenging twists and turns of Repco Mountain. McCowie and the other double-entered riders have a unique experience of the event. They complete their first runs up the hill, in McCowie's case a lightweight class leading 937, and then they get on board the Alpine helicopter to be whisked down the mountain. We run the little bike, the lightweight bike first, then uh, we jump in the chopper at the top, and we're back to the bottom to run the big bikes. Good that we've had a run. The road's in good condition this morning. And um, yeah, we're just going to go and hold it on on the big bike now. And it's all in a matter of minutes, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, no, real quick turnaround. So game on, let's do it. Problems plagued the heavyweight class with Glenn Manning, one of the many riders to strike trouble, including yesterday's third place rider Gregory Baines, leaving Craig Hyde in the box seat on board his 92 Kawasaki XK500 leading into the final runs. Craig Anderson took to the front of the lightweight quads, his orange KTM edging out the Yamahas of McRae and Wacro, and in the middleweight motorcycles it was Nathan McCowie again, with a 9 minute 14. McCowie's continuing lead doesn't do justice to the competitiveness of the field in this class, the next six riders separated by only 13 seconds, led by the hard charging Michael Cotter, who continues to close the gap to McCowie. The Super Quads had a new leader, Darcy Prendergast taking to the front with a 9 minute 18 after mechanical issues sidelined Ian Fitch in sight of the finish line. The ominous smoke not looking good here. Qualifying has just finished on race day and it's been a catalogue of challenges and you have not been able to avoid them either. No, 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 we've had bad luck, about half a K from the top and the engine let go, currently just fitting another engine, it's not quite as strong as the one we had. I'd like to think if we get it back in and it goes well, we, we've still got a shot at the uh, top three or top five and perhaps the uh, possible memorial trophy. Problems for Chris Hay saw the end of his open two-wheel drive race to the Sky campaign, with Trevor Crowe also sitting out this run at left Rene Spikerman's Mark 1 escort ahead of Grant Aiken. The rally course division was again headed by the Subaru of Hall and Whiteman, running close to their goal of cracking nine minutes and heading a diverse field of cars. Alan Dippy and Paul Cohill, both members of the Highlands Motorsport Park, hit the front of the historic rally, their Porsche taking a slender lead, and Whangarei's Clem Tristan Lammers took the lead from his father in the off-road class. Michael and Lorna Tall maintain their advantage in the open four-wheel drive class over Glenn Frew, setting the benchmark time for the big boys to follow in their quest for fastest qualifying time. 
first, Brett Hay with the Nimble Hill Climb Special spitting flames as it made its way up the course. The car's tuned to the maximum and running full boost for this all-important final day. You can see the difference between a front-running rally car and the fully-fledged hill climb machine here on the clock. The Repco race to the Sky Special crossing the line a full 26 seconds faster than tall. Next up, Tony Quinn. Confidence clearly growing as he attacked the hill in his purpose-built machine. Considering the task of learning a gnarly 14.5 kilometre gravel hill and an insanely fast 850 horsepower hill climb car, his time of nine minutes and five seconds was impressive and tantalizingly close to going under the nine minute mark. The next man was targeting something bigger. Alistair McRae wanted to be the first man to go under eight minutes. The boost on the Varnage Subaru firmly wound to the maximum and the freshly re-engineered 854 horsepower motor ready for the full-scale attack of Retco Mountain. At the first sector split, he was a full eight seconds up on the previous best time. However, it wasn't to be. One third of the way into the course, the pace slowed slightly and then at the eight kilometer mark, disaster as the Subaru inexplicably ground to a halt. Thoughts no doubt immediately turning to the Possum Board Motorsport Crew spare engine. Next, Monster Tajima, the car on the edge and sounding very different, undoubtedly louder and more aggressive than the day before as he took on the rally track and blasted up the first hill and into the 14 and a half kilometre course. Then merely two kilometres in, disaster. Approaching 230 kilometres an hour at the fastest point of the course, the engine cover came loose, taking the rear wing with it, robbing the car of the downforce it needed to stay connected with the road. Monster, thanks to the Super 86's impressive safety systems, was unhurt and walked away. We compared the times of the top three vehicles at the point Monster's engine cover came adrift. Amazingly, he had pulled back all of the previous day's deficit and was a narrow point two ahead of McRae and a massive six and a half seconds ahead of Hayward after less than two kilometres. To see the conclusion of that battle, we'll have to wait for next year. Amidst the drama, the man who set the pace in day one has kept it clean in qualifying, Brett. What about the unfolding today? Yeah, look, that was a surprise. You know, we only found out about it. We were parked up the top there and we'd heard that Monster had come off. We just thought he'd pulled over to the side, not realising how bad it was. Um, look, our first thoughts were his safety. I mean, that's what we're all here. We're all competitors, but we don't want to see anyone get hurt. So we were relieved to see that he was OK. We're pushing the limits with cars, with horsepower, with the roads getting swept, it's getting rougher. It's awesome fun, but, you know, we're just always wary that, you know, things like this can happen. At the end of the day, from now on, what's important, what's happened before now is totally irrelevant, you know. It comes down to the final run. Maximum power at your disposal and we were all with bated breath, but the engine, no good. Tell us about it. I'm not really sure what's happened. I just I felt the engine miss a couple of times from probably kilometre five up and then at kilometre eight just stopped so and there's no compression so something's let go internally. But the, the PBMS guys are they're a good bunch of guys, they've got a lot of experience and, and they think they can change the engine in time for the, the final run so fingers crossed. Monster, you just come off the hill talking now with fans. Talk us through the first run in there. I need a flying license. What happened with the wing? We're well, going to the air, so I cannot control. So I need a flying license, otherwise uh, impossible. How wonderful to see you safe and now talking to the fans. Yeah, because my car is a very, very you know, nice you know, for safety reasons, so I'm here. So everybody, I give you the sign, autograph, okay? While it may have been easier to pack up and go home, the legend that is Monster Tajima was more concerned about getting back to the pits and signing posters for the kids. Next up, it was the Top 20 shootout run on the rally track at the base of Repco Mountain. Hayward's fastest time gave him the final choice on the unique driver decided seeding order for the final Repco race to the Sky Run. Hayward deciding to run between Fitch and McRae, who would be back for the final. 
Here at the Repco Race to the Sky, there is so much more than just racing up the hill. It's a festival of activities for the entire family. We've got music in the background. We've got wood chopping. We've got face painting for the kids. There's plenty of beautiful food from all over the world. Now, Michaela and Meg, you're with me. What is on your faces? They look fantastic. And um, we've got cats. Yeah, we get them done. Hey, what have you enjoyed the most? Well, I've enjoyed going on the climbing wall. It's really fun. I think they're really talented. One of them is a really important expert and they're all cool and do an amazing jump. Anyone that you really want to win? Elster McRae. I wanted to win in the original Possum Born Cup. I think it's so special because it's accessible and you can come sit in this beautiful, world-class, pristine environment in a production like this that is absolutely world-class. It's not just about petrol heads, there's free bouncy castle and face painting and all that kind of thing, so it keeps them entertained and we can watch the racing. And there's a chance to get up close and personal with the action on the hill in a helicopter. Nick, tell us about that experience. It's pretty unique because you, obviously you're in, in the third dimension watching it from the air from a bunch of different angles at the same time, so it's a unique experience to watch the racing. Welcome back to Repco Race to the Sky. As the various crews prepared for the final run back in the pit area, the possum born motorsport crew thrashed to replace the damaged engine from qualifying. On to the final run for all of the classes in the lightweight motorcycles division, Nathan McCalwee continued his strong form, taking out the class on his KTM, Andrew Kirk second on his Honda CRF 250. In the heavyweights, Red Bull World Enduro expert Chris Birch's difficult weekend continued with a rare puncher on the big KTM Adventurer R ruling him out of the final. Gregory Baines went on to take an amazingly narrow six tenths of a second victory in the heavyweight class from Race to the Sky veteran Craig Hyde with Glenn Manning third on his KTM. The Invercargill lads have pulled it out in the last run, best time there. Yeah, best time for the weekend actually, eight seconds off which is good. So that was an awesome run that one. All the skiff is blowing off the top, the more traction. Yeah, but you sort of, you know, go hard out in the last one though, don't you? Yeah, you always keep the last bit of juice for the last. You'll go that wee bit extra on the corners just to try and make a bit of time up. In the middleweight division, Michael Cotter led from Pyroa's Mark White. Matt Squire in third with McCowie yet to run. Unbelievable. 9.23. Oh. Oh. Good air, buddy. Good nice air, Bloody good. Mike, three seconds on your previous best this weekend. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm stoked. It's, uh, you know, each time I've been coming up, I've been getting faster and faster. And, uh, yeah, that one didn't feel better, but it was quicker. So, hey, I'm wrapped. However, McCowie was out on the course, but things didn't look quite right with a broken visor, signs of an early issue in the run. Plus the fact he looked to be struggling with the bike on Repco Mountain. As he heads to the finish, he will be at least 40 seconds down. The lightweight Victor obviously disappointed as he was the class of the field until now. That's heartbreak for McCowie. It's an incredible weekend for you and it's ended with a huge drama. Yeah, it has. Uh, went down and the sweeper down on the rally cross section at the bottom and um, yeah, went down really hard, sort of sort of struggled to get up with it, but uh, we got up and we got up here, but uh, obviously not the end result we were looking for after dominating uh, for the rest of the weekend, but uh, hey, that's racing and uh, that's the way it goes. For the lightweight quad division, Joshua Wackro was third on his Yamaha, Craig Anderson second on his KTM, with Callum McRae victorious on yet another Yamaha with just one second between the three. With Fitch and Prendergast still to run in Super Quad, James McIndoe was fastest with a 9.16 and Race to the Sky legend Rocket Ron Kirkman setting a 10.08 at just 78 years young. 10.08 for Rocket Ron on the last run, it looked pretty hairy and scary. It was hairy scary, yeah, but a hell of a lot of fun. I just loved it, loved it. I'm about another 10 years younger now. <laughs> That run was absolutely amazing. Last run gave it everything I could give it. I've lost third and fourth gear, but run my best time yet. Can't say anymore. Eh? It's the mountain, the people, the atmosphere, the whole thing, done deal. 
In the Classic Rally class, Australians Keith and Marianne Callanan finished third in their Mark II Escort with a 9.56, but pipping them by just a couple of seconds were Alan Dippy and Paul Cohill in their beautiful Porsche 911. The goal of this Highlands duo was to crack the 10 minute mark and you did it on the oh, last yeah. run, 9.52. Oh, oh beautiful, yeah, that's uh -huh. great. It's all we wanted to do all weekend. Uh -huh. It's a great race, it's man versus mountain versus machine and that 10 minute mark we just didn't think we had anything left in it. Fabulous run, it, was, it felt quick. 9.52, wow that's cool. Last to run in the class were Daniel and Christy Callanan approaching the finish line on top of Repco Mountain, unbelievably pipping the Kiwi Porsche duo by just eight tenths of a second. Thank you very much guys, yeah, thank well you. Done. We were very lucky, Christy did a great job on the notes, um, it was a great event, we had so much fun, if only we had one more crack at it. The Orange Off-Roaders were popular with the fans and certainly put on a show across the diverse field of buggies and thunder trucks, with Clem Tristan Lammers winning in his New Zealand built buggy. Last run you did what you needed to do, 9.34. Category winner, dude. I can't ask for better, man. I'm happy. Happy as. Finally I got a clean run. Without It even is missing though, too. Right down the bottom it wasn't going right, and then all of a sudden around the first sharp corner, then it started coming. Father Klim Lammers finished second overall. Ahead of Donald Preston's Toyota Hilux with John O'Klimo disappointed in fourth in the awesome sounding twin turbo V8 Thunder truck. Yeah, mate. <laughs> this is the first time this weekend you probably haven't seen me smile. That was a, um, I spun and uh, just about put the nose off the bank and uh, had to backwards and forwards because this thing's got terrible lock and uh, I just threw it away. For open two wheel drive, race to the sky founder Grant Aiken finished second in the game over Toyota 86. With the win going to another race to the sky stalwart Trevor Crowe, victorious in his unique Subaru Justy. This was the first time this weekend that you've kept it clean. Yeah, just little bits we had to fix and a friend lent me some tyres for this run and he said, well you better have a go at the record, so he did. Look at that smile, you've had so much fun. It's unbelievable, it is just the best of it. Super quad racer Darcy Prendergast was on course but didn't look to be as quick as his earlier runs. Long time campaigner Darcy Prendergast, that one was a 9.25, what do you think? Uh, yeah, a little bit slower than I'm being, not, not surprised. Um, uh, my co-rider had a crash a couple of riders ago, but thanks for me, he looks like he's going to be okay, just good. The open four-wheel drive class saw a Mitsubishi trifecta with Mike Wellington in third, Glenn Frew second in his Mitsubishi Evo, dipping into the eights with an 8.59. But it was Michael and Lorna Tall setting the benchmark for the rest of the field with a strong 8.51 run to take out the victory. Next on course was Tony Quinn, the low-slung hill climb machine bulldozing his way to the top of Repco Mountain. But the improvements he was looking for weren't quite there in the end, but the potential for this car is obvious to all. 9.05 this morning was the best time, but this run let you down a wee bit. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, I didn't enjoy that run so much, but anyway, it's all good. I'm glad to be finished, and it's been a great event, great weekend, bloody awesome. I think everybody's happy. It's a cool thing for everybody to do, and the Cadrona Valley should hang on to it. So it's business time for Repco Race to the Sky on course. The flying Ian Fitch, Brett Hayward, next on course in the Repco Special. Longer wheelbase, a lot wider than the previous generation car, and in behind them, Alistair McRae with a miraculous engine change in the Vantage Subaru. So what can Ian Fitch do? Approaching the finish line, needs to go quicker than an 8.51 and a half, set by Michael Tall in the Mitsubishi Evo. 8.35.2 for Fitch, 16.3 seconds up. Haywood approaching the finish line likewise. He's already gone quicker than he ever has before on the mountain. He's going to do it here. Approaching the finish line, Haywood will go quickest. 8.24.5, up by 10. Well, just as you get out of the helmet, we've got uh, Brett Haywood here from all the way from Australia. He's been at the pointy end of the field. Mate, you sounded like you were pretty happy with that one. Yeah, look, that was awesome. That's the best run I've had all weekend. Really, really wrapped that the course finished there because I've um, just my brakes have seized on as I've gone across the finish line to break into the pit area. So, friggin' awesome. No idea of times, but yeah, look, it's irrelevant to me. I just had a ball. I'm on the track. I'm alive. I'm at the top, and it's just friggin' awesome. Well, Ian Finch has just leaned in the window, giving you a big uh, 
A big well done. And look, I'll tell you both right now, mate, it was an 8.24. Oh, cool. Yeah, wrapped with that. Yeah, that's as good as, that's everything. You know, I had a pretty good run, bogged down one corner. But, hey, no excuses. That's the best I can do. And look, Alistair, any other guys, if they knock it off, credit to them. They deserve it thoroughly. Fantastic effort there from Brad Hayward. Now it is the turn of Alistair McRae in the Vantage Subaru. This car has won on the mountain before in the hands of Possum Bourne back in 2001. Down on horsepower after the engine change. McRae is flying towards the finish. It's not going to be sub eight. He's going to be quickest. Hayward's time still seconds away. McRae crosses the line, 8.17.6. 2015 Repco race to the sky winner. Well, here we are. Everybody's crowded around him. Alistair McRae, 817. You had it in you? Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, the disappointment with the engine this morning and then to put the spare engine in and the guy said it's not as quick, but it's not far away. So we turned the boost to the maximum and gave it everything, so it paid off. Mate, those boys worked extremely hard to get that engine in that car and the time they had. It's a pretty massive effort. They took the old engine out, took everything off it, put it onto the, the new short motor put that in, in in three hours and we've just done an 817 so can't complain mate all we can say is congratulations and hopefully we'll have you back again here soon definitely great last few cars out on course australian steve riley and the nearly thousand horsepower holden commodore four-wheel drive at a 902.098 kiwi sloan cox just misses out on the top kiwi for the possum born trophy taken out by ian fitch with an 849 and taking out Rally Course, Kieran Hall and Glenn Whiteman, 858.691 in their Subaru. You did what you'd asked of yourself and cracked nine minutes. For this car to be uh, twice the weight of those lead runners and uh, half the horsepower and to break nine minutes and uh, come away with the top ten finish, we're absolutely stoked. So on to the overall results. Alistair McRae with the victory ahead of Brett Hayward, Ian Fitch, Sloan Cox, Michael Tall, Keith Stewart, Kieran Hall, Glenn Frew, Steve Riley and Andrew Graves completing the top ten as the top three on the podium come back down off the Repco Mountain to receive their congratulations and their trophies. Congratulations for Alistair McRae from Spencer Bourne. Uh, Spencer, come across here. Present you with the Possum Bourne Trophy to Ian Finch.